So this is supposedly a rap song, but it doesn't sound like it, right? It reads more like the beginning to a story or maybe a poem, and that's kind of how it's performed in the track. But Billy Woods is a rapper, one of the best rappers of his generation, and in my opinion, to ever do it. But I'm not here to tell you why he's good. That's pretty easy to tell if you're paying attention. He's obviously talented. I'm here to talk about how you can write like him. Well, more importantly, how you can learn from his writing. I wouldn't recommend trying to copy him. You'll likely fail, and I doubt that you've got his unique background. That's part of what makes his perspective so captivating. But there are some really cool techniques and tricks in his rapping that you can learn to instantly take your verses to the next level. So let's circle back to the lines at the top. What's going on here? Well, that question is sort of the point. You don't really know yet. This is a writing trick called in mediasris. It's used all over the place in movies, stories, and in this case, songs. The idea is that you plunge the audience into the thick of a scene, circumstance, or narrative and expect them to play catch up. You don't explain anything, you just drop them into the middle of whatever it is going on. When I first learned about this concept, I immediately thought of Avengers Age of Ultron of all things. The first scene of that movie is this big action set piece that follows the Avengers completing this mission in a wintry forest and you have no idea what they're doing, where they are, why they're there, and you know, like what they're trying to accomplish, right? So you're immediately asking all those questions and that's what keeps you as an audience member engaged and trying to see, you know, what is going on. That's the point of the first line in Asylum. You're supposed to ask, what exactly is happening here? And in some ways, listening to Woods is like being in a constant state of in mediasperis. It's disorienting, it's jarring. You're always playing catch up as he quickly moves from one concept or visual to the next, but that's intentional. Woods is a master of stream of consciousness storytelling. When done well, stream of consciousness storytelling can be a powerful way to create mystery and tension. And it can be a really unique way to express feelings of isolation, fear, pain, and even love. So circling back to these opening lines, you read them and there's this sense of unease. You don't even need the amazing yet unsettling instrumental behind it to know that something weird is going on. And Woods, or the narrator he's assuming, watching the place go dark by as early as eight o'clock only to see a light burn later in the night. What is this light for? Who is Mengistu Hala Miriam? This is the beauty of In Mediasperis. It begs all of these questions and it immediately keeps you engaged as an audience. Now, Woods does not expect you to know who Mengistu Hala Miriam is. It's good to know who Mengistu is, but you don't have to know. You can gather by context clues that this person is clearly somewhat powerful or dangerous in some way, or at the very least, mysterious. For example, Woods says, I think Mengistu Hale Miriam is my neighbor. He doesn't actually even know if that's who it is in the first place. These context clues alone, paired with the timing of the situation, the in mediasperis of it all, creates enough intrigue to get the point across and keep the audience engaged. If the audience feels so inclined, they can Google to see who Mengistu is, and that changes the complexion of the entire verse and provides a lot more depth to it, but it's not necessary. You still get bad vibes, and that's the whole point. This is a great example of genuinely layered writing that isn't try hard or pretentious. A deep historical reference like this one is calculated. Woods knows the average listener, or even the above average listener, probably won't know who Mengistu is, so he paints enough context clues around the reference to keep it interesting and inviting. The reference is an invitation to engage at a deeper level, but not a requirement. It's a challenge. He's challenging the reader to take the time to go and Google who is Mengistu Hale Miriam. What did he do? What was his importance? Why is Billy Woods even talking about him? But you don't have to do that. You can survive through the rest of the song not doing all of that work. Giving your listener that option is the key to layered writing because you want it to still be accessible enough that you can listen to it on a surface level, but you want the reader, you want the listener to go deeper. But if you don't allow any entry point, if you kind of scare the reader off with all these references that they don't understand, then they're innately going to feel intimidated. And it may even lessen their enjoyment of the track because they may feel like it's pretentious or you're just simply asking too much of them and it's just not accessible enough to engage with on a surface level. Because sometimes people are just listening to music to enjoy it. They're not always trying to pull out their textbooks and, you know, figure out everything that, you know, your heart is trying to express, right? So with layered writing, you have to have that flexibility. It needs to be an invitation, not a requirement. Let's talk a little bit more about using references because they really are the foundation of a lot of Billy Woods raps. I don't have the stats in front of me. I didn't take the time to do any analysis, but I would feel confident to say at least one out of every three or four lines in the Woods songs features some sort of specific reference to an event, person, or moment in time. If you're looking to write raps, 
abstract or underground rap specifically, be sure to use your references with purpose. If you're reading Wood's lyrics, right, he's not just throwing these references out just for anything, right? They have a purpose. For example, with the Mengistu one, which you already talked about, there's a historical and thematic reason as to why he's mentioning who this person is, and it's also a tension-building mechanism to bring the reader in. So those are two very clear and obvious reasons why he's bringing in this reference. It's not just to throw out a reference because that's what a lot of rappers do. If you decide to use references, they should be important to you, relevant to the rest of the song, and important enough to the listener to want to dig deeper if they so choose. We talked a little bit about making the reference an invitation and also, you know, making kind of the surface level context clues around the reference interesting enough to keep the listener engaged. But you also need to make sure that the actual reference that you're using, what's going on at the deep layers of your track or your verse, are interesting enough to justify the reader doing all that work to get there, right? The real meat and messaging of what you're trying to say at these deeper levels needs to be interesting and engaging. Otherwise, the reader's gonna be like, why did you have me do all of that? What was the point? And one other very important point to take from Wood's writing and his use of references is that most times they're personal to him. They're from his experiences, from his knowledge bank of resources and things that he knows. Like I said at the beginning of the video, don't try to copy Woods, you probably don't have his unique perspective, but you have your unique perspective. So when you're using your references, draw from that. If you're using references that are personal to you, you'll be a lot more familiar with them and therefore able to kind of weave them into your track in a really organic way. Let other people do their thing, you figure out yours. Trust me, it'll be better for everyone. There's so much going on in this track, but in the interest of time, I'm going to leave it here. If you want to see more breakdowns of this track and the Ethiopes album and Billy Woods in general, please do let me know because I really would love to make this kind of content more. I just want to see if the interest is there before I spend hours and hours of filming and editing, you know, on lyrical breakdown type videos. So if you liked this video and this lyrical breakdown, let me know in the comments. Let me know what other things about this track and about Woods you've noticed and subscribe and hit the notification bell because that lets me know you want more, which means you'll get more. So so yeah, with that being said, I will see you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.